Right, so this time around we're going to talk about a subject that I think is pretty hard. This is about substitution methods in solving ordinary differential equations. So the idea here is that just like when you solve certain integrals, it's sometimes a good idea to do a substitution, to switch to a different variable. The same thing is true of some differential equations. And the best way to learn how this works is through example. So let's look at an example. Let's suppose we want to find the general solution of y prime equals x plus y minus 1 squared. Okay, so I think if you look at this for a moment, you'll realize it's not separable. It's also not linear. So we have a little bit of a problem as far as uh, using either of the techniques that we've already discussed. And certainly you can't just integrate it because this side is not just a function of x. So we're going to have to do something different here. The idea is you take a piece of this uh, ODE and you just call it by another name. We usually call it V for no particular reason. So in this case, I'm going to say V equals X plus Y minus 1. All right, now let's think about what that implies. Uh, first of all, if you take the derivative with respect to x, this turns into 1 plus y prime. OK, this is important because we have v over here. This is just v squared on the right-hand side. But how do you rewrite the left-hand side? Well, you have to use this fact that v prime is 1 plus, v, uh, 1 plus y prime. So y prime ends up being v prime minus 1. And then that allows us to rewrite this whole differential equation as v prime minus 1 equals v squared. Okay, so just to reiterate, we're renaming x plus y minus 1 as v. That means this right-hand side becomes v squared. The left-hand side, y prime, can be found can be figured out by uh, taking the derivative of v with respect to x. Okay. But in any case, now we're dealing with the differential equation v prime equals v squared plus one, and that can be solved pretty easily, right? That one is separable, so we can write this as dv dx equals v squared plus 1. Divide both sides by v squared plus 1, and we'll get 1 over v squared plus 1 dv equals dx. And then these are just two indefinite integrals set equal to each other. The left-hand side is the arctangent of v. Hopefully we remember that. The right-hand side is just, well, the antiderivative of 1 is just x. So this is just x plus c. In that case, v is going to be the tangent of x plus c. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't really solve the problem because the original differential equation was in terms of y, and then you give me an answer in terms of not y. So we need to fix this. Just like in u substitution, we need to convert back to terms of the original variable. So v is x plus y minus 1, so what this is saying is that x plus y minus 1 is equal to the tangent of x plus c. And then in that case, y 
is just going to be 1 minus x plus the tangent of x plus c, and then that becomes our general solution. Okay. So to recap again, we have this original ODE. It's first order, but it's not linear or separable. So you look for a substitution. You just declare some part of this ODE to be V. Then in order to write Y prime, we need to take the derivative of V and everything else with respect to X. You rewrite the ODE and then solve it. And then that gives you a path to solving the original ODE. Okay. So why don't we try another example? This one, it, oh, whoops, this one is y prime equals the square root of x plus y minus 5. And again, we're looking for the general solution. So once again, uh, this is not separable. You can't write it as a function of x times a function of y. It's also not linear, because it's not a linear combination of y and its derivatives. So we're going to have to make some kind of substitution. What sort of substitution do you think we're going to make here? Well, just like in U substitution, it's often the, the thing that is most inside the expression. So in this case, I'm going to make it x plus y minus 5. Okay. You take the derivative, and this becomes v prime equals 1 plus y prime. That makes it pretty clear that y prime is v prime minus 1. Therefore, this entire ODE can be rewritten as v prime minus 1 equals the square root of v. And then that, that can be rewritten as v prime equals the square root of v plus 1. That's separable. That's separable. We can rewrite this as dv dx equals square root of v plus 1. Then separate variables. So we get 1 over the square root of v plus 1 dv is equal to dx. And then these are just two indefinite integrals set equal to each other. So now I'm going to want to solve this integral. Do you know how to solve this one? This one is actually a very strange u substitution. So what we're going to do is set u to be the square root of v plus 1. In that case, du is going to be 1 half v to the negative 1 half dv, right? That's just the derivative. OK, but now v to the negative 1 half, that's just 1 over the square root of v. And then the square root of v, we know that as u minus 1. So 1 over 2 times u minus 1 dv equals du. And then in that case, 2 times u minus 1 du equals dv. So 
So all in all, we have here integral. Okay, the dv is 2u minus 1 du. And then the denominator is u. And this is the integral of 1. Divide top by u. And this integral becomes integral 2 minus 1 over u du. The antiderivative there is going to be 2u minus ln u, ln absolute value of u, I suppose. u is a name for square root of v plus 1. So this is 2 square root of v plus 1 minus the natural log of the absolute value of square root of v plus 1 equals x plus c. Now as far as solving this equation goes, I think that's basically impossible. Right? I don't see how we could isolate v here. But what, what we can do is we can substitute back in what v is. So this becomes 2 square root of x plus y minus 5 plus 1 minus the natural log of the square root of x plus y minus 5 plus 1 equals x plus c. And I suppose it's not ideal, but that is at least an implicit form of our general solution. Okay. So again, just to emphasize, you have an ODE that's hard to solve. You pick a piece of it and set that to V. You take the derivative of V in order to figure out what Y prime is in terms of V, and then rewrite the ODE and solve it. Let's try another one. This one is 2yy prime equals e raised to the y squared minus x squared plus 2x. Well, that's a pretty tough one, right? It's certainly not linear, and it's certainly not separable. So we're going to have to make some kind of substitution. For this one, I'm going to choose v equals y squared minus x squared. If you do that, then v prime becomes 2y y prime minus 2x. Well, it so happens that we have a 2y y prime minus 2x because this whole differential equation can be rewritten as 2y y prime minus 2x equals e to the y squared minus x squared. This left hand side is just v prime. So now we have v prime equals e raised to v. Okay. So this is separable. By the way, just so we're clear, uh, in the three examples that I did so far, they, it turned out to be a separable equation. It's not always going to be separable. Sometimes it's going to be linear in first order, and we will see examples of that. 
But in any case, this one is separable. dv dx equals e to the v. In that case, e to the negative v dv equals dx. And then these are just two indefinite integrals set equal to each other. Antiderivative of e to the negative v is negative e to the negative v. And that's equal to antiderivative of 1 is x plus c. So you can negate both sides and then get e to the negative v equals negative x plus, I guess we'll call this c1 and this c2. You take the natural log of both sides, you get e to the negative v equals the natural log of c2 minus x. And then in that case, v is going to have to be negative natural log c minus x. Now v, by definition, is y squared minus x squared. So this says y squared minus x squared is negative natural log c minus x. In that case, y squared equals x squared minus natural log of c minus x. And that becomes our unimplicit form of our general solution. OK. Again, we just chose some piece of this ODE, called it v, and then went from there. Now then, uh, as you can see, uh, just like in U substitution, it's hard to tell what you should select to be the substitution. Now, there are two classes of substitution problems that are more predictable. And so we'll talk about those now. The first are called Bernoulli substitutions. So. First of all, we're going to have to define what a Bernoulli equation is. So, definition. A Bernoulli equation is any ODE that can be written in the form y prime plus a function of x times y equals another function of x. So if I just left it like that, that would be a linear ODE. I hope we realize that. This is not linear because we're going to put a y to the nth power here for some n. So Bernoulli equations, these can always be solved. Well, they, they can always be reduced to finding an integral by making the substitution v equals y to the 1 minus n. OK? The best way to learn this is to see it in action. 
So let's do an example. We have, let's say, x squared y prime plus, uh, sorry, equals y squared plus 3xy. All right, so first of all, this is not in the, the form that we need it to be in in order to recognize it as a Bernoulli equation. So we'll just do a little bit of algebra to change that situation. First of all, we need the y and the y prime on the same side. So I'm going to move the 3xy over to the left-hand side. OK, great. Now the other problem is that the, de the coefficient of y prime has to be 1, just like in the standard form of a linear ODE. And so we're going to have to divide by x squared. So y prime minus 3 over xy equals 1 over x squared y squared. OK. And now we can hopefully see that this matches the definition of a Bernoulli equation. So, as I said, the, the substitution you need to make here is y to the 1 minus n. In this case, n is 2. So we're going to say v equals y to the 1 minus 2, which of course is just y to the negative 1. All right, well, that's fine and all, but we're going to have to figure out y prime in that case. So you take the derivative of both sides of this. v prime equals, let's see, according to the chain rule, this is going to be negative y to the negative 2 times y prime. The chain rule is being used here because y is itself a function of x. All right, so let's think about how we can rewrite this ODE now. First of all, the original substitution indicates that y is going to be v to the negative 1. Besides that, um, y prime is going to be negative y squared times v y is a name for, or, or I should say, y is v to the negative 1. So y prime equals negative v to the negative 2 v. Take these two pieces of information and rewrite the ODE. So let's see, y prime is negative v to the negative 2 v prime. Oh, oh, this should be a v prime. And uh, uh, minus 3 over x times y. y, we've already realized, is v to the negative 1 equals, let's see, 1 over x squared times y squared. y squared is v to the negative 2. And just like that, we have rewritten the ODE. All right, but that doesn't look a lot easier to solve, does it? Well, it does if you multiply everything by negative v squared. So if you get the leading coefficient to be 1 by dividing by negative v to the negative 2, which is the same as multiplying by negative v squared, then we'll get here v prime plus 3 over x v equals negative 1 over x squared. And now that looks easier, right? 
Hopefully we recognize that this is a first order linear ODE in standard form. So we can define an integrating factor. Mu of x is defined as e raised to an antiderivative of 3 over x. Well, that would be e to the 3 ln x, which is just x cubed. Multiply x cubed by the entire standard form, and we get x cubed v prime plus 3x squared v equals negative x. Now, as always when dealing with a first order linear ODE, this left hand side is rigged to be the derivative of the integrating factor times v in this case. So the derivative of x cubed times v is negative x. In that case, x cubed v is negative integral x. You do that antiderivative, you get x cubed v equals negative 1 half x squared plus c. Multiply everything by x to the negative third, and you get v equals negative 1 half x to the negative 1 plus c x to the negative third. So finally, v is a name for y to the negative 1. So y to the negative 1 is equal to all of that stuff. And therefore y is equal to 1 over c x to the negative third minus 1 half x to the negative first. And that would be our general solution. There are other ways to write it, but that's at least one. Let's do another example of a Bernoulli equation. This one is y to the fourth y prime equals negative 3x squared y to the fifth plus x squared. Again, it's not separable or linear. So the first thing that well, I guess, I guess it's not immediately obvious that it's not linear, but if you try to put it into standard form, okay, you want to put, you want to divide everything by y to the fourth, you get y prime equals negative 3x squared y plus x squared y to the negative fourth. I think you can tell that you're not going to be able to put that into the standard form for a linear ODE, okay? because of that y to the negative fourth. But if we move this to the other side, if we get y prime plus 3x squared y, that's equal to x squared y to the negative fourth. And then that is a Bernoulli ODE. It's a Bernoulli ODE because it's a linear combination of y and y prime equals a function of x times y raised to a power. So, the substitution to make here always is v equals y to the 1 minus that power. 1 minus negative 4 is of course 5, so this is y to the fifth.
I did this a little bit differently uh, in the previous example, but just so that we are clear that there are more than one way to do this, I'm going to, well, do it slightly differently this way. So we have v equals y to the fifth. That means y equals v to the one fifth. You take the derivative of this, and you get y prime equals one fifth v to the negative four fifths times v prime. And then those two pieces of information allow you to rewrite the ODE. y prime is one fifth v to the negative four over five v prime equals. Uh, uh, not equals, uh, plus 3x squared times y, which is v to the one-fifth, equals x squared times y to the negative fourth, so that's going to be v to the negative four-fifths. But now if you divide everything by one-fifth v to the negative four-fifths, which, might I add, is the same thing as multiplying by 5v to the positive 4 fifths, then what you'll get here is v prime plus 15x squared v equals uh, 5x squared. And then that is a linear first order ODE. In standard form, in fact. Okay. So we define the integrating factor. Mu of x is going to be equal to, let's see, e to the antiderivative of 15x squared. So that's going to end up being e raised to the 5x cubed. You multiply the entire standard form by the integrating factor. You get e to the 5x cubed v prime plus 15x squared e to the 5x cubed v equals... 5x squared e to the 5x cubed. And then as always, the left-hand side is rigged to be the derivative of the integrating factor times v. So e to the 5x cubed times v, the derivative of that is 5x squared e to the 5x cubed. So from here, we just need to integrate both sides. We get e to the 5x cubed times v equals the integral of 5x squared e to the 5x cubed. And then that integral can be done by u substitution. We just set u to be 5x cubed and du becomes 15x squared dx. We deduce e to the 5x cubed v equals, uh, let's see here, one third integral of e to the u du. Antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. So this is one third e to the u plus c. u is a name for 5x cubed. So we have here e to the 5x cubed v equals one third e to the 5x cubed plus c. 
divide both sides by 5x cubed, or sorry, e to the 5x cubed, and we get v equals one third plus c e to the negative 5x cubed. And then, as before, v is a name for y to the fifth. So what we get here is that y is going to be the fifth root of one third plus c e to the negative 5x cubed. And that right there is our general solution. Okay, so to reiterate, uh, this substitution y to the 1 minus n is always the way to solve a Bernoulli ODE. Not all ODEs are Bernoulli, of course. Okay, and there's, there's one other predictable type of substitution problem. So if you have an ODE that can be written as y prime equals a function of y over x, any function of y over x, you can make what's called the homogeneous substitution. V equals y over x. And this will almost always get you to be able to solve this type of ODE. Now I want to warn you, uh, this term homogeneous is going to come up again later in this class, and it's going to mean something completely different. I, I wish that weren't the case. I, I wish that there was a better term for this than homogeneous substitution, because homogeneous linear equation means something very, very different. So you should probably use a different word for that different thing. But this is how the terminology is. I don't make the rules. In any case, as before, it's best to learn by example. So let's do an example of an ODE that can be solved by a homogeneous substitution. Let's take a look at x squared y prime plus, or actually equals, y squared plus 3xy. Oh, this one actually is both homogeneous and Bernoulli, now that I look at it. Um, but we'll, we'll solve it with just the homogeneous substitution, because that's often easier. So the idea is we want to rewrite this so that y prime is a function of y over x. So divide both sides by x squared, you get y prime equals y squared over x squared plus 3y over x. All right. So now, hopefully, we recognize that this is y prime equals y over x squared plus 3y over x. So we can make the homogeneous substitution. We'll say v equals y over x. All right, in that case, well, okay, so 
that takes care of the right hand side. The right hand side just becomes v squared plus 3v. But what is y prime? We have to figure that out now. So to get y prime, I'm going to multiply both sides by x and get y equals vx. And then according to the product rule, y prime is v prime x plus v. So the left hand side becomes v prime x plus v. And this is equal to v squared plus 3v. Subtract v from both sides. And hopefully, hopefully we see that this is now a separable ODE. So x dv dx equals v squared plus 2v. Do separation of variables and you get 1 over v squared plus 2v dv equals 1 over x dx. And these are just two indefinite integrals set equal to each other. The left hand side, or the right hand side is easy. That's just ln absolute value of x. The left hand side needs to be done by partial fractions. So this is 1 over v times v plus 2. This is a over v plus b over v plus 2. You multiply both sides by v times v plus 2, and what you get is 1 equals a times v plus 2 plus bv. Combine like terms and powers of v, and you get 1 equals a plus b times v plus 2a. That makes it clear that, first of all, a plus b has to be 0, because this is 0, v plus 1. And second, 2a has to be 1. Well, that makes it pretty clear that a is going to be 1 half, and b is going to be negative 1 half. So what we're looking at here on the left side is... 1 half integral 1 over v minus 1 half integral 1 over v plus 2. Equals integral of 1 over x. You do all these antiderivatives, you get 1 half ln v, absolute value v, I guess, minus 1 half ln absolute value v plus 2 equals ln absolute value of x plus c. And now, now uh, v is just a name for y over x, so this can turn into 1 half natural log absolute value of y over x minus one half natural log absolute value y over x plus two equals natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And perhaps that can be solved for y, but I don't really feel like it. So I'm just going to leave that in an implicit form. Okay, let's look at an initial value problem that involves substitution on an ODE.
So we have xy prime equals 2x plus 3y. And at the same time, y of negative 1 should be 3. So this right here is our initial value problem. So, uh, oh, actually, this one is linear. If you, yeah, this one is actually linear. Uh, but we'll solve it using a homogeneous substitution anyways, just to illustrate the method. <laughs> that is the point of doing an example. Uh, so we'll divide both sides by x. We'll get y prime equals 2 plus 3y over x. Make the substitution v equals y over x. Now, y is vx, and therefore y prime is v prime x plus v. So this ODE gets rewritten as v prime x plus v equals 2 plus 3v. Subtract v from both sides, we get v prime x equals 2 plus 2v. And then that's separable. This is x dv dx equals 2v plus 1. You separate variables, so we get 1 over 2v plus 1 dv equals 1 over x dx. And these are integrals. This one is 1 half ln absolute value v plus 1, and that's equal to ln absolute value of x plus c1. Multiply everything by 2, we get ln absolute value v plus 1 equals 2 ln absolute value x plus another c. Raise e to both sides, and you get absolute value of v plus 1 equals uh, e raised to the 2 ln absolute value of x plus c2. That can be rewritten as e to the 2 ln absolute value of x e to the c2. e to the c2 we might as well call c3. And e to the 2 ln absolute value of x just becomes x squared. So v plus 1 is c x squared. And now once again, uh, v is just a name for y over x. So this is y over x plus 1 equals cx squared. Multiply everything by x, and we get y plus x equals cx cubed. Subtract x from both sides, and we get the explicit form of the general solution, cx cubed minus x. And then we are done. Wait a second, we're not done. <laughs> Sorry, I, I wasn't being coy there. I, I, I legitimately forgot that this was an initial value problem. So therefore, we're not looking for just the general solution. We actually want it to satisfy the, we want a particular solution that satisfies the condition y of negative one has to be three. So let's, let's, uh, let's unrectangle this. So what we want here is 3 equals y of negative 1, 
So that would be C, negative 1 cubed minus negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is just negative 1. So this is just 1 minus C. So uh, let's see, this is an equation that we can solve for C, right? C is now, uh, let's see, 3 equals 1 minus C. So add C to both sides, you get C plus 3 equals 1. Subtract 3 from both sides and you get C equals negative 2. So now the real answer is y equals negative 2 x cubed minus x and then that is the particular solution that solves our initial value problem. All right. And why don't we do one more example of another homogeneous substitution. This one is 2xy, y prime equals 4x squared plus 3y squared. Divide both sides by 2xy, and you get y prime equals 2xy to the negative 1 plus 3 over 2 1 over x, y. So there's two ways to do this problem. You can, first of all, recognize that it is a Bernoulli equation where the exponent is negative 1. Alternatively, you can do the homogeneous substitution because this is y prime equals 2 y over x to the negative 1 plus 3 halves y over x. So if you declare v to be y over x, well in that case y prime is going to be v prime x plus v according to the product rule, right? So this equation becomes v prime x plus v equals 2 over v plus 3 halves v. Subtract v from both sides and we get v prime x equals 2 over v plus 1 half v. And now this is separable. So we have x dv dx equals 2 over v plus 1 half v. You separate variables and we get here 1 over 2 over v plus 1 half v dv equals 1 over x dx. And these are now integrals.
So, if you multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 2v, what you'll get is integral 2v over 4 plus uh, v squared dv. And then that can be done by a u substitution. Set u to be 4 plus v squared. In that case, du becomes 2v dv. And then this integral just becomes integral of 1 over u du equals integral of 1 over x dx. Therefore, ln absolute value u equals ln absolute value x plus c, we'll call it c1. u is a name for v, uh, 4 plus v squared. This is ln absolute value x plus c1. And then v is a name for y over x, so we can write this as ln absolute value 4 plus y over x squared equals ln absolute value x plus c. And then, yeah, we might as well leave this in an implicit form. Okay. So, three types of substitution problems. One that's unnamed. It's just a random substitution. Then there's the Bernoulli substitution, where it's always v equals y to the uh, 1 minus n. And then there's the homogeneous substitution, where it's always just y over x. Okay. And these different substitutions come in handy in different equations, just like different u substitutions come in handy in different integrals. All right, so that's all for today. See you in the next one.